Hi, I'm Leonie from Spines and Splines. Instead of making something new today, I'm going to go through my drawers and talk about an older artwork from my collection. I haven't been able to make a traditional type etching with copper and ferric chloride for a while with my current studio setup, and I think talking about some older works might be a good way to show some different art making techniques. This is Taurus, an etching and letterpress print that I made back in 2013. This artwork was made for a solo exhibition that I had in Melbourne, Australia at the Mission to Seafarers Norla Dome Gallery. I didn't have my own etching press at the time, so I printed all the work for this show at an open access print studio in Melbourne called the Fire Station Print Studio. I had access there to etching presses, an etching room with a ferric chloride bath and a small letterpress collection. I started making these constellation etchings back in 2011 when I was studying for my Master of Fine Art. I'd been playing around with a whole lot of star maps and I had an interest in weaving and textiles and I wanted to combine all those ideas to make artworks that connected the themes of storytelling and science. Even though I'm just showing details from the Taurus etching in this video, I made 20 different artworks for the exhibition and I worked on them all at the same time so that I could be as efficient as possible with all the processes. Talking about efficiency when it comes to making art isn't always the most romantic idea, but when you're paying a daily rate for studio access, it unfortunately becomes pretty important quite quickly. The 20 artworks that I ended up making for this exhibition reference the 20 constellations commonly used in the past for celestial navigation in the Southern Hemisphere. A constellation is a group of stars in a section of the sky, and the brightest stars in the constellations are labelled with the Greek alphabet. In my etchings, all those bright stars have lines radiating out to the edge of the constellation, which defines its shape on the piece of paper. To make my plates, I started out by putting a hard charbonnel bitumen ground onto a degreased copper plate, and then I used a bundle of candles to smoke the ground so that it was as dark as possible. The first step in the drawing was to trace the outline of the constellation with a marker, and then map out all the stars and celestial objects from my maps onto the plate. I outlined my little star circles with a dry point needle, and then etched it in the ferric chloride for a few minutes, then cross-hatched all the stars and etched them again for another few minutes. The lines that radiate out from each of the Bayer stars were scratched away and etched in groups. I wanted the alpha star to have the strongest lines, then the beta star to have the next darkest set of lines, and so on until I reached the last designated star in the constellation, which usually only got a minute or two in the bath. I had to calculate how long each set of lines would be etched for in advance, and then time the etches quite specifically so that I didn't over etch anything. I also had to do quite a few touch ups during the process with a sharpie marker to patch any chipped or accidentally scratched areas of ground on the plate. The effect in the end is this crisscrossing of hundreds of lines, ranging from dark to light to give the illusion of depth in the map. After my plates were etched, cleaned up and filed, I printed them using an etching press with Charbonnel 55985 black ink. When I was initially experimenting with my prints, I realised that I needed to use a really stiff ink so that it stayed in the very fine lines when I printed them. Looser inks just wiped right off and the stiffer ink also picked up the plate tone really well. Speaking of plate tone, the Taurus etching was a little different from the others I made at around about the same time because it was made from a recycled piece of copper. It had originally been used by somebody else to make an etching, then they'd scratch through their image and put it in the copper recycling box at my old uni for somebody else to reuse. I made the Taurus etching on the back of that plate and as a result it had all of these great incidental marks from scratches and from foul biting of the plate from its first time through the etching bath, and they really added to the atmosphere of the image. 
I also added some extra scratches and marks with sandpaper and then less scientifically by throwing the plate on the ground outside a few times and moving it about. When the etchings were printed, I added text to the artworks using letterpress. A lot of my etchings from this series were too big to actually print on the little letterpress at the studio, so most of them were printed by rubbing the back side of the paper carefully by hand. I made a little jig with cardboard for each print, with a little cutout for the set type to come through, and I used this to register my paper for each print. It was pretty laborious, but it worked out well in the end. The Taurus print has a line from the Odyssey by Homer that connects back the imagery and story of the constellation myth. And that's how I printed my Taurus etching. Some of this edition is still for sale on my website, and currently there's still one at Printmaker Gallery in Melbourne, so you can have a look at it in either of those places. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share it. There are also links in the description for my Patreon, Facebook and Instagram, and some affiliate links to art stores where you can buy materials. Thanks for watching. Cheers.